Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono White Forge. What is going on, everybody? And today, we are going to be jumping back into the Explorer format. Today is our flex day on the channel, which just means we get to jump outside of standard a little bit and enjoy what is, I think, a really, really fun format. I'm going to talk through the deck in just a second, but a couple things I want to remind you of. First and foremost, we have our Dominaria United giveaway going on right now. We do have a draft booster box on the line that we're going to be giving away for free on September 16th. The ways you can enter for free are subscribing here on YouTube, on Discord, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Uh, if you happen to be a Patreon member or a YouTube channel member, which you can click just down below, there's a little join button down there. You can certainly join the membership. Uh, not only because you're, you know, helping us monetarily, you do get, of course, the, the normal bonuses on either respective platform, but uh, you do also get some bonus entries into those giveaways. So uh, that stands for all future giveaways, just a heads up. Uh, so definitely worthwhile uh, to, to explore that option if you are willing. Uh, the other thing I will mention, if you happen to be a content creator watching this uh, video, uh, first and foremost, thank you. Uh, second, though, if you would like to take up the guest slot on Saturday, uh, we do have one uh, coming up this Saturday, I believe. But uh, from here on out, we are opened up to anybody. If you guys are a content creator in the magic space, feel free to get in contact with us. Basically, the idea is that you record a video and get it in front of our audience. Uh, and so we feature you guys on the channel uh, and all the details get worked out behind the scenes. So it's super easy up to your standards. Uh, and we make sure that we're hopefully putting you guys in a very positive light uh, to a different audience. So definitely check that out. But let's talk about the deck here, guys. So I will go ahead and mention while I have changed the deck significantly, uh, the original list was created here by MTG Arena uh, Arena original decks, excuse me. Uh, so thank you there for the base list. Really the only major things that I've uh, left intact are the removal package, which I thought was quite strong, so I didn't feel the need to mess with that too much. Uh, and then essentially this like large scale package of the payoff cards, and even those we shifted around. So this is a pretty big push in a different direction, which is all built around Mystic Forge. The idea being if we can get this down along with some of these other cards, we might be able to play a lot of cards off the top of our deck uh, for free, or at least very cheap. Uh, probably not for free, I should say, but uh, for very, very cheap. Uh, and therefore, we can kind of just churn through the deck. We can actually control the top of our deck in a lot of cases as well. Uh, and therefore, we actually get to do quite a bit with this list. Uh, obviously, the big payoffs are the both, both Ugans here and then the Ulamog. Uh, but Ugin the Ineffable plays a crucial role because it cheapens up all of our colorless spells, which of course is the majority of the deck. Between that and Forsaken Monument, we basically get a lot of extra ramp because we've got all these generic lands. Uh, and then of course, cheapening up everything makes it really easy to play. Uh, in the sense of Maze Mind Tome, it's actually a free card if we've got Ugin the Ineffable down, so that's kind of sick. Uh, and then Hedron Ar Archive is of course going to ramp us and hopefully draw as well. Uh, we do have, like I said, the Ulamog here. This is going to be the big spell that hopefully finishes the game, if not on the spot, probably the turn after. Uh, and then Ugin the, the Spirit Dragon here does a great job of just kind of resetting the board for us. Uh, we do have a couple of things in the land section that I did want to kind of talk about. So first and foremost, Bonder's Enclave does give us the ability to draw a card. Uh, if we control a, a creature with power four or greater, which you'll notice uh, the Forsaken Monument gives plus two plus two, and Ugin the Ineffable puts a two two creature out there, which gets that buff, which does make it a four four, which means we can draw a card. Uh, very convoluted, I know, but basically it's it works. Uh, Blast Zone here to deal with a lot of the low ground stuff. Uh, Crawling Barons is an alternate win condition. Inventor's Fair to uh, fetch up an artifact, but also gain some life. Uh, Scavenger Grounds just deals with all the graveyards, which is really important for this, uh, just in case. And then, of course, the Void here is some easy scry. Uh, we do have 12 white lands, uh, so 12 white sources throughout the deck to play the removal package. And we actually have a Ganjo uh, as a way of dealing with some of the attacking or blocking creatures as well. So. All of this to say, this is a very interesting pile of cards. Uh, again, and I, I really think the ceiling for this one is quite high. Uh, I did practice one game with it. I did get the win and I did pull off the multi-card kind of combo here uh, where you get to play a lot of stuff off the top of your deck. So I'm hoping we get to show you guys that, but 
let's jump in. Let's not waste any time. Let's have some fun with this one, guys. I, I'm really excited for this deck. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? Uh, it's a little tricky. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. This is definitely gonna be a tricky one. Uh, however, we do have the four into five into six. If we can get some lands, we also have the double white, which is important to note because Doomscar is, of course, something that we are going to be looking for if we happen to be up against a creature deck here. Normally, I wouldn't keep this, but again, we are kind of a higher up deck, uh, and so a four four mana spell here is not the end of the world. World. I'm just gonna lead with the planes. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that it really matters either way, but that's actually quite nice to see uh, just because it does deal with some things here. Uh, so, uh, perfect. We will go for the, uh, the scavenger grounds, and next turn we already have the Mystic Forge, which is great. It's gonna control the top of our deck, uh, and we can search out a land as we need to. That's perfectly fine. I'm not really all that worried about it. Uh, the question is, do we want to go ahead and um, hit it? Uh, yeah, I think I will. will. Just tap for one, just to be safe. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. We'll just go ahead and get that off the field. They don't get to ramp now, which is great. Uh, ooh, even better. I'm going to go for the Hedron Archive here. Uh, so the reason being, I first and foremost want to get Ugin the Ineffable down, but I also want to get the Forsaken Monument down. This just guarantees that we've got the mana to do it. I'm fairly certain they're going to have, yeah, they've got Titan of Industry, so they're going to have ways to deal with the artifacts that we have, uh, which is very important. We are going to have to keep that in mind. Uh, thankfully, though, uh, this Ugin is actually going to deal with the fight rigging quite well uh, and hopefully keep some things off the board here. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll throw this out. Um, I will very quickly just go ahead and get that off the field here. Um, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and play the Maze Mind Tome as well. We can leave that up and scry uh, at the end of their turn. I'm fairly certain they'll be able to deal with Ugin, but uh, we do now have a decent setup to control the deck and get ourselves further in. Uh, interesting. Okay. Huh. All right, uh, let's scry. I'm actually going to throw that on the bottom, uh, given we actually would prefer lands at this point. Uh, and there's another Ugin. Um, all right, so if we do this, uh, we can play the Forsaken Monument, which will then give us one, two, three, four, five mana. Um, all right, so the safe play then is just this. Uh, so let's do this. We'll go ahead and hit for four. Get all of that off of the field. Um, we'll just go ahead and plus. There's that doom scar. Um, and we'll just pass. Uh, I think the safest play is definitely to just keep things off of the field for the opponent. Uh, and so that's kind of why I went that route. We're not really in danger of losing a lot of... I mean, a lot of life at once, definitely. But we're not necessarily just going to die right on the spot. Uh, and so that's actually quite helpful for us. Uh, would love to get this Forsaken Monument down, though, this upcoming turn. I think that's going to be pretty important for us. And they've got a uh, Gilded Goose here. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so they do put a little 1-1 one -one counter. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, scry here. We'll put that on the bottom. We definitely don't need multiple Forsaken Monuments, so that seems easy enough. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's make sure we are tapping the white sources here, because now all of these are obviously going to give us a little bit more to do. Go ahead and get that off of the field. Let's drop the Mystic Forge. Let's start gaining some life out of this deal. Um, we'll plus up, since we don't really want that uh, on the top of our deck, and unfortunately we really didn't find too much. Now, we do have the ability to scry away, so this is exactly what we're trying to do um, wow, another one. Um, okay. So the question becomes, do we want to go for the uh, exile? I think we can. If we get a playable card, yeah. So now we're going to start to flood out even better. Let's scry. <laughs> uh, and this is exactly what we were trying to do here. Uh, do we want to draw the cards? I don't think so. Um, we could... Yeah, I, so I am going to make a bit of a safe-ish play here, uh, which is to play this Ugin and blow up the fight rigging. 
Uh, so the only reason I'm doing this is to guarantee that they can't just uh, go off with free cards and then start to really take over. Uh, that's a bit of an aggressive play, but I think it really keeps us in the game. And there we go, it actually wins us the game. So fantastic, exactly how we drew it up, guys. That was absolutely perfect. Let's see if we can keep this up. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and this is a pretty easy keep to me. We've got the Fateful Absence, we've got the Mystic Forge. We're definitely missing, missing excuse me, a lot of other pieces to this puzzle, I think. Uh, however, we do just kind of have the easy scry here, uh, so we can hopefully dig a little bit. We definitely don't need another Ulamog. Uh, so we'll drop that back, and hopefully we can get somewhere. All right. Uh, obviously don't love to see that, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, definitely gonna be a, uh, frustrating deck here, though, to, to be up against, so we'll see what we can do. They did shock themselves. Interesting. All right, so the easy play is definitely to just do this. I'm assuming this is Rogue's Mill? Uh, if I had to guess. Um, so, let's make sure we go ahead and kill this one, I believe is the better option. Uh, and we'll just keep ourselves in. Uh, so, what would be good? A Doom Scar would be great. We do have the Seed of the Empire that can, of course, deal with some of the, uh, you know, if they keep attacking, we can kind of deal with it. Uh, so I think the play is just to go here and then be able to keep up that Seat of the Empire. Uh, I'm assuming they have another... Oh, it's a Slither Wisp. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, sure. So thankfully they can't take our land, which is going to be our solution to at least one of these problems. So I'm not actually as worried about this. They could... No, I guess they can't really counter this. It's a channel ability, so they can't really do that. Uh, and that gives us the opportunity to shut off their card draw, which I think is more important than shutting off the mill. Um, yeah. They also might just be running out of resources here. Unfortunately, so are we. Uh, we did not get a land there, which is hugely bad for us, uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, we are going to just have to pass here and really, really hope we can get a land off the top. It truthfully just has to be a land. It can't really be anything else. Um, but again, we couldn't really play the other seat of the Empire anyway, so I'm kind of okay with uh, the, the path we took. I will keep the land um, as unexciting as that might seem. I think that's pretty important for us. And hopefully they just can't deal with this Hedron Archive. If they can't, uh, we should be able to kind of get ourselves back into this. We haven't taken a ton of damage yet. Uh, down to four, or down by four, excuse me. Uh, they do have a Hive of the Eye Tyrant, worth noting. Um, so they could start attacking there with that, but it looks like they're not going to. Okay, um... I'm going to go for the Ugin play. Um, I just see if this works. Okay, they're gonna counter. Uh, that's fine, not the end of the world. There's the Slither Wisp. Okay, so they are running themselves down to very few resources left. Uh, so hopefully we can get them. Um, now a Doomscar would be amazing. We just go ahead and sweep and then they really can't do too much, but they do still have two cards in hand, so we do have to be concerned about that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven mana. Ugh, that's a little tricky. <clears throat> Even if we play the Hedron Archive, we're down, or, or we're only up to nine. Uh, there's a Xerath Sand, so they're going to be able to pull some stuff, I believe, uh, which is not so good. Yep. Um, the only good thing is this doesn't blow up like any of our stuff, which is kind of important. Um, okay. So we play the Hedron Archive. We play the Mystic Forge. And, oof, I think that's kind of it. Um, I think we just die though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, yep. They just have us. Uh, fair enough. Good game. We were very close because we did have the Ulamog in hand, but uh, unfortunately we just weren't able to deal with everything in time and you know, that happens. So let's jump into a game three guys. Let's see how we do. All right guys. And here we are for game number three. What an interesting hand. Uh, do we keep this? I don't think so. I mean, 
I feel like that's just a bad keep. Uh, this, I think we definitely will keep. Uh, we can throw one of the Mystic Forges back. Uh, and basically, if we draw a second white source, we're in relatively good shape with that Doom Scar available. And then any two lands gets us the Mystic Forge. Of course, we have Fateful Absence to kind of buy us a little time as well. So we'll see what we can do. Um, Inventor's Fair is a pretty strong, you know, message on turn one that, hey, this is what we're doing. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I will go ahead and foretell this just to get it out of the hand, uh, if nothing else, you know. If they happen to be a Grixis list with Thoughtseize or something to that effect, I don't really want to just lose that. Uh, so I think here, though, we definitely play the Iganjo and uh, hope that we can draw another land. Ah, don't love that. Uh, we do have answers for it, but I don't love that. Um, Let's go ahead and play the Hedron Archive, because this does ramp us uh, into that Ugin, uh, which is, of course, our answer. Now they've got the Lotus Field, though, which is definitely bad for us. So, um, what can we do? Um, I mean, I think it's just this. Right? Yeah, I think it's just this. Again, this gives us the most outs. Uh, unfortunately, they already played the Lotus Fields, so they've already got the mana they need. <clears throat> um, but they're not really doing too much. I'm a little amazed. Uh, I would have thought, you know, some counter magic or something. I think Forsaken Monument's worth countering. Uh, but it looks like a Valakut Awakening. I don't know this deck very well. I know what the, the engine pieces are, like the Blood Sun and the Lotus Field are kind of the, the help you get there cards. I don't know what the payoffs are for this deck. Obviously, it could be any number of things given the fact that they've got tons of mana. Uh, so that is worth noting. But again, I'm just not well enough uh, or well versed enough in Explorer to know that yet. Uh, and so worth noting that uh, we may just lose to, a, to an easy combo here. Uh, which, hey, good on the opponent if they get it. Um, I'm assuming they might just kill something. Uh, I mean, both of the Forsaken Monument and Archive are pretty strong. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that sucks. Um, okay. I mean, we just go for the Mystic Forge play. And I'm gonna go ahead and exile this because we know what it is. Ugh, that's terrible too. Um, we could stop on upkeep here uh, and exile that top card again. Okay. That's a little scary. Um, so the reason I wanna stop on upkeep, Doomscar really isn't that helpful for us. We've already got one available, so let's go ahead and do this now. All right, um, it's a card, so <laughs> we'll take it. Um, let's go ahead to main. I'm gonna drop this first and see if they do anything about it. All right, uh, and then we'll try for this, but anticipating it not working. Um, this, I believe, is just gonna end up being like a control style deck. Yeah, that's very good. So they could just easily find a counter spell here. It could be any number of things. Um, but we do kind of have to go for it. Yep, there's the Dovin's Veto. Uh, yep. Not a lot we can do about it. Um, so I think they're gonna just be able to take over this game, to be honest. We basically just have to get super lucky. Um, I do like the Scavenger Grounds to get the Memory Deluge out of the, the graveyard here, so, like, that's not terrible, but, I mean, they've got all the all the mana in the world here and a wealth of cards available to them so i can't imagine this is gonna go our way <laughs> shark typhoon yep fantastic little card uh we can kill it all but again they've got counter magic i am sure up uh what do we think about this do we go for it i think we wait just take that um I'll go ahead and draw a card here just because, uh, yep, and we'll pass. Uh, now I'm kind of wishing we had exiled then drawn so we could have killed the Teferi, but again, I'm anticipating they've got plenty of counter magic, things like that, so I don't think this is going to work too well. And they're going to go ahead and do that, sure. 
So they do get a big old 5-5 five five out of the deal. This is probably just kind of the, the writing on the wall. They've got another Lotus Field. Goodness gracious. Uh, they've got Memory Deluge. They've got Teferi. We have got one Fateful Absence and a Doomscar. <laughs> uh, ambitious is maybe the word we're looking for here. Uh, yep. All right, let's do this just first. See what happens. Fully expect a counter. Oops. Let's go here. Fully expect another counter. <laughs> if they counter this, we definitely concede. Oh no, we got it. But I mean, <laughs> we know, right? Like they definitely just have us. Let's scry. Again, we should normally do this on the uh, the end step of the opponent's turn, but I don't think it really matters. Um, <laughs> I'm good gaming them, guys. All right, that was a little rough, uh, but that's okay. Let's go ahead, let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you do know that Mystic Forge is probably one of my favorite uh, cards and one of my favorite engine pieces. Uh, and so to play this again in Explorer, it's been a while since we've been able to, has been an absolute blast. So on that end alone, I highly recommend trying a list, either this one or something like it. Uh, I do think it's a blast to play. Uh, as far as how the deck actually operates, I think... Uh, first and foremost, we did get to see it do its thing in game one, which is great. I think when it does that, obviously it's very difficult for you to lose, given the fact that you've probably got most of the answers you need and you've got so much board presence that unless they have something like a farewell, which we saw in that game three, it's going to be really tricky for them to deal with everything at once. Uh, now I'm not saying it's obviously possible, but um, it is very difficult for them. And so in that scenario, I think obviously you're going to do great. Uh, generally speaking, you can take over pretty quick and end the game fairly quickly. Um, but it does take time to get there. Uh, I do think this has some of the legs to get there in terms of the removal package, stuff like that. Uh, but it's gonna fare pretty roughly against control style decks. Um, just because, this, I mean, the simple fact of the matter is uh, it has very little like true interaction other than like creature removal, a little bit of planeswalker removal, and then of course the march does help against a lot of different stuff, but it's minimal, right? Like we focus very heavily on the colorless, the artifact side of things. Uh, and in that scenario, naturally it's gonna be a little tricky. Uh, all that to say though, it's still a blast to play. Uh, highly, highly recommend trying this one. It's very fun. Uh, again, not saying it's gonna be amazing or anything, but this is really our first look at kind of building a deck, uh, not 100% from the ground up, but definitely close. Uh, and uh, I think it went okay. I think it was really fun. And truthfully, it, it resolves that's kind of goal number one anyway. Uh, and I love that. So I, uh, I do really appreciate everybody watching. Thank you so much. I do hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. And again, if you happen to be a content creator, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to feature you on the channel. Uh, but all that to say, guys, thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys later.